right, what's up everybody? Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Francisco, or some of you may know me as Paco, and I'm here with the wonderful Christy Odom. She's, you have to point this way. Yeah, I'm a little flipped around, so she's right over there. Um, I just wanna say a couple, or say hey to a couple people in the chat. We got Ryan, we got Israel, we got Alberto, the Pac-Man. Hey man, how's it going? Nice to see you. R&B, Sean. Lindsey Palmer, Alex, he was live with us actually early this week doing some designing in Adobe 3D. All right, so I got a couple housekeeping items to go through before we could get into Christy's introduction. Um, so I just wanna let everybody know how the schedule is looking, what we just went through, what's going on. Um, right before this, we had the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with Voodoo Val. So it's important if you are watching that because Christy and I are actually gonna look at some design feedback on the Discord channel for those of you who are working on it and get the chance to submit by the time we start looking at challenges in about an hour and a half from now. Um, before that, we had Getting Started and Adobe Spark with Paul Tranny. All right, we're live right now with Creating Photo Presets. After that, we'll have Paul Tranny back again with the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. Then we'll have some logo design with Claudia, a good friend of mine. And then we'll have the XD Daily Creative uh, Challenge with the one and only Howard Pinsky. Then a draw along with Kyle T. Webster. And finally, the design off with Voodoo Val and Cody Bear. So as you can see, our schedule has just gotten stacked from these last couple of weeks. And we're just happy to keep sharing content with you all. And yeah, just having you all join along. So thank you for joining us. Um, all right, Christy, why don't we get into your introduction? Hi, thank you guys for being here. And it's really exciting to be here. Welcome to my living room. <laughs> I've never had a broadcast out of my living room before, so this is really exciting for me. Um, let's see, a little bit about me. I'm a photographer and a filmmaker. I focus on nature conservation work. I do a lot of public speaking as well. I'm a Nikon ambassador, and I'm really excited to show you guys my process today from start to finish. <laughs> That's um, awesome. Yeah, so let's, uh, why don't we have a look at some of your work? Um, we're going to switch over to Kit Christy's screen. She does all sorts of amazing photography, uh, photographing nature, insects. We're going to talk about the Fibonacci spiral, something that she just taught me about. Um, cool. So we're live on your screen. Well, this is my website. It might have a little bit of a lag on it, but um, yeah, you guys should go check it out. Um, my work really focuses on connecting people emotionally to nature and wildlife. Um, so I like to take photos that make people feel in a different way, that show maybe a little bit more of a connection. Um, the more and more I photograph wildlife, the more I realize that animals have unique personalities, they have emotions, they have you know, these different characters and my photography honors and celebrates that to give people that connection. Um, here's my Instagram page. <laughs> you guys are more than welcome to follow me there. I would love that. Um, yes, please follow her along. You're going to see all <laughs> sorts of photos of cute animals, insects. Is that what's in the middle right there and between the monkey and the penguin? Looks That's like a, a damsel mantis. fly. It's a dam <laughs> it's, I never knew that you can make a fly look cute. <laughs> uh, it's a damsel fly. So it's, a, it's like a, a dragonfly, different type, of, but it's got the long wings and it was really nice because in the photo, you can see all the details on the eyeballs, all the pollen and stuff, which I, I, I love. I love all the details. Yeah, it's so a, a lot beautiful of these, photo. Oh, thank you. A lot of these are videos. Um, so yeah, you'd have to follow to kind of get an idea. Um, but also like one of the things that I really challenge myself for is I'm going to the images that I've taken around my neck of the woods, around my neighborhood and things outside, because right now it's um, you know, a little bit of restrictions on where we can create. And um, I, I love photography because photography helps me see beauty in things. Um, so I'm going to show you guys some of the beauty and the critters that I share my neck of the woods with. Um, but I met this amazing individual a week ago. His name is Paco. <laughs> hey, <laughs> and we me. were just talking about, uh, we were talking about what we were doing to create right now. And he told me about his Instagram. He went outside and did a, a hyperlapse. Is this how how close is this to? Yeah, this, this is, is so, cool. uh, so that's the painted ladies, and it's less than I don't know half a mile oh. from me. Um, but yeah, it's you know along along the sense of staying local and doing things, of course, respectfully six feet apart. Um, I've also just been trying to stay creative and working with what I can locally without actually going out. And you know, like I said, got to stay local. So I shot this, and it's a hyperlapse. 
Um, and yeah, it's essentially a moving time lapse. Um, if you take a time lapse of me doing this hyper lapse, you're gonna see that I just move very slowly, but that's how you get the cool effect. Um, it stabilizes and you, it, it kind of just focuses on one point and it just gives you this awesome, like stabilized matrixy effect. Um, but yeah, thank you for calling that out, Christy. <laughs> I wanna hit play, but I'm not sure if the, the sound's gonna come through or not. Oh no, I can't hear it. Oh good, okay, cause it's really loud on my ears. <laughs> But it's really cool. I was going, oh my gosh, that's amazing. But yeah, he's got all well, these great so pictures much. of Yosemite and being outdoors. Oh, and I was like, it. this show's about you. <laughs> I was like, I well, don't know this guy, that. but I want to be his friend. So you guys should follow Paco. Here's his Instagram handle um, and see some beautiful nature stuff there as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you, Christy. Right on. All right. Well, enough with the introductions. Why don't we jump right into it? Let's talk about what you're going to do. Um, the, all the types of compositions that we're going to get into. So let's jump into it. Great. Well, one of the things that I love about being an artist is I love that our background kind of plays a role in, in how we produce art and how we make art. Uh, and for me, I'm going to go a little bit into my background because I think it's relevant in, in the work I produce. Um, I actually like I used to run a dark room. And I got obsessed with photography. I got obsessed with going to the dark room and, you know, printing out pictures. Even the word photograph stands for light drawing. So it was beautiful, like analog photography. Light would go through the lens, hit the subject, go through the lens, hit a negative. You would process that negative and put light through it in the dark room. And I adored doing that. I love the whole reflections and light thing. So my background went heavy on dark room work. Um, I also got my degree in fine arts uh, with a concentration in photo media. So I was really inspired by all the masters of, of the craft and all the, the, all the artists that, that helped create the art, art world. And one of the things that I love about Lightroom is I found a way for Lightroom to and my love for, you know, even mathematics, I used to be on a math team and used to compete in math tournaments and stuff like that. And I remember going from going into fine arts, I actually had a, a lot of trouble thinking creatively. Um, and then once I started realizing how much mathematics is in arts, I started getting really excited. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about geometry. <laughs> I hope that's okay. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about how I use, um, things that I learned in the darkroom and how I used, you know, different mathematical geometry to, um, in my work. So that's a little bit about me. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's, Gotta... let's talk about, um, okay, the cool. Fibonacci part. If you want to show it on your screen, I can show yeah, everybody what yeah, you're talking yeah. about. So I got really excited when I started realizing that people, you know, when my teacher and my fine art teacher started talking about the Fibonacci spiral and, um, how artists used, this amazing mathematical sequence. Um, so here's what the Fibonacci sequence is. Um, it's where two numbers equal the next one. One, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. 13. Um, so this is the Wikipedia page that shows a little bit about the Fibonacci sequence. Um, when you take those numbers and you make little squares, um, you get this, you know, you get this over on the right, you see this yellow map. And if you take those squares and you draw arches throughout, you get what's called the golden, the Fibonacci spiral or the golden ratio, uh, the golden spiral. Um, sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, but the wonderful thing about this is it's been used in art throughout. Um, so if you look at Fibonacci sequence in art, you can see that different artists painted in a way to bring your eye in, to bring your eye into the Mona Lisa, to, to move your eye throughout the work, to catch, catch yourself to different subjects. Have you guys ever been to a museum and like looked at a piece of work and your eye just gets trapped inside the work? Um, but then sometimes when you look at a piece of work, your eye just kind of leaves and you lose interest really fast. So I started learning how to trap people's eyes in photography using dodging and burning techniques. Um, the Fibonacci spirals actually found all throughout nature as well. Um, from the cosmos we have some, to seashells. We have some fans of the Fibonacci spiral. We have Ashi saying <laughs> the golden ratio is the bomb. <laughs> and then uh, William saying I love geometry. So we have some fans of all this. Wonderful. So uh, great. Um, so that's one of the things that I love is I love being able to use Lightroom to move people throughout an image um, using the Fibonacci spiral and moving people throughout using geometry. So I'm going to start by showing you just a little bit of my work and how I use different, yeah, 
different shapes. And then I'm going to move into doing some editing and how I make Lightroom work for me. So just give me awesome. a second. So you guys are getting invited into my Lightroom catalog, right? <laughs> Tell yep, me when you see it. Yep, cool. got it. Awesome. No worries. Um, so I started simple when I started trying to play with geometry. I started with using lines, like simpling, moving people's eyes through the frame with a very straight shape, very straight line. And I started doing that a little bit more like going from one subject to the other, like the mother orangutan's hand to the baby back to the mom's. Um, I guess that's a foot at the bottom. <laughs> Uh, but then I started realizing that like, you know, different lines can really pull your eyes in a different way. This is a whale shark I shot in Indonesia and the light was actually diffracting around my body. And I was using that to, to point people towards shot. the subject. Thank I, you, I love that. And then, so we, you got that sort of haloing central effect just by using your body as kind of the, the key that's shining this light on this whale shark. Yeah. So diffraction is when an obstacle causes light to bend. So I was using my body as the obstacle. Um, so there's different images in the series where you can actually see my body shape on top of the, the whale shark. So I was snorkeling, so I was above and I kept swimming, swimming, swimming because I wanted the patterns to mix. And I wanted those lines to just draw you straight into the subject. Um, but yeah, no, I love being able to use lines to, to go throughout, to show you texture, to show how an image, you know, how I want people to go through the image. Um, one of the shapes that you see throughout art over and over is triangles. Um, you know, so I'm always looking for triangles in nature. Um, I'm always looking for different ways, even if it's not an obvious triangle, but you can see the arms going to the baby's head and, and you can see the embrace through a triangle. Now, usually at my workshops, I get sheets of paper and I make people draw their eye movement um, because being able to understand how your eye moves through a frame is actually extremely difficult um, and it takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of time so one of the exercises if you're ever at home and you're looking at work um, take a sheet of paper and start drawing how your eye moves um, if it moves in triangles if it moves in circles and when you're looking and you're walking around day to day i try to look at shapes and i get people at the workshops to call out the shapes they see um, and that way it'll can it can start becoming second nature because it is it's a hard thing to train yourself to do um, more triangles, <laughs> another triangle here. But then I started using circles, right? Moving people in through circles. And then I started to really try to push myself and use Fibonacci spirals to pull people in. There it I, is, I see the spiral. Pretty obvious, um, but when you look at this image, your eye gets trapped in the image. It stays, which I think is, is great. It moves through in a way. And I think that this is kind of the optimal way to, you know, really master photography is if you can really pull people in and get their eyes to just stay in the frame and move from one subject to the other or one part or one texture or one bit of light to another, um, you can really bring people in on a deeper level. Um, there's masters of this like Irving Penn and Salgado and people that I'm just obsessed with that have this beautiful movement to their images different spirals that go in from the shape of the arms you know and even a little bit more abstract so this image I edited it in a way so that I was dodging and burning to pull you from the the face of the orangutan up to the arm to the mouth of the mother even with the hands kind of pulling you in from the side so I'm working my eye movement to narrate my image how I want my viewers to see so that's a little bit about what I try to do. And I, you know, also I, 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 I kind of obsessed with, um, I keep things really simple with Lightroom. I keep things really simple, but I think the results, sometimes the results of mastering the simple can be stunning. Yeah. Um, agreed. So Less is I'm, more type of thing. <laughs> exactly. And most of my techniques that I do in Lightroom are techniques that I used to do in the darkroom. Um, when I ran a dark room, I used to do all this dodging and burning in the dark room. So I'd have the negative and the enlarger and put light through and I would, you know, dodge and burn the old school technique, which I made some tools today, which are the same tools that I had in my dark room. Um, so a lot of times if I wanted a little more light, I'd have a piece of cardboard with a hole on it <laughs> and <laughs> I would awesome. use that and I would move it around so that I could have just a little bit more light in a certain spot. I also had a lot of these things. I'd make coat hangers and I would like, if I wanted one spot to be just a little lighter, 
I know these look so dodgy, but the ones is that, that a, were my Is that a makeshift room, dodging and burning device? This is what I originally <laughs> did so to cool. dodge and burn. I use these pieces of cardboard on strings on coat hangers. <laughs> on coat hanger. That's amazing. I've you never seen that. Move it higher up if you want it yeah, to be a yeah. bigger circle, lower down if you want it to be smaller. And you have to shake it around so these wires don't like... It, so this is the old school dodging and burning. Sometimes I'd have a sheet of paper or like right. a piece of cardboard. and But now you can do it so easy, so easy. You know, I learned from studying some of the darkroom masters like Ansel Adams and Jerry Yulesman. Are you, any of you guys out there familiar with Jerry Yulesman? This guy, crazy, unbelievable. He did this composite work in the darkroom, but he would do it with like eight or nine different enlargers and he would sit there and like you know it would take him a week to produce a piece of work you know That's amazing and i saw yosemite on that book oh. um those of you who know me uh yosemite i'm just a sucker for because i actually used to live there and Did i just really? that's that's where i fell in love with photography honestly so ansel adams yosemite you're speaking my language yeah check that out i mean but he did this in the dark room and yeah, it, i'll make that bigger things, Oh my yeah. gosh, it's like crazy. His work is so good. Is there a door inside a rock? Yes. That's crazy. Yes. And to do this sort of composite work, I mean, now it's it's easy. Let, like, let's admit, like it's kind of getting easy, especially with the tools from Photoshop and Lightroom. Um, but one of the reasons I like to talk about Yulesman and Ansel Adams is because these guys actually took a lot of time. Like they took a lot of time dodging and burning and doing composite work in the dark room that was beautiful and it was part of the art and i think that that's amazing and it's so easy now and it's so great what you can do in like two minutes in lightroom <laughs> which i love so okay there's a little bit of an intro hope i didn't yeah, go on too we have long um, that. Now i'm gonna call gonna... out some comments in the chat larry <sighs> lehu said he totally made the same kind of tools it seems like he used to do his own photography as well awesome <laughs> um yeah, some people were calling out the Fibonacci spiral. Uh, Michelle had a quick question. Quick question for Chrissy before I go. Uh, who's your favorite photography? I actually think you kind of just touched up on that right now. Oh, actually, uh, it's probably Salgado. <laughs> Salgado did oh, there you this. Go. Oh, my gosh, I'm so obsessed. He did this amazing work of just different stories of, of uh, humans and workers. And then he moved to do um, nature work over the last, I guess, decade. And his nature stuff is just, it's unreal. He actually like reforested this whole area in Brazil to make another rainforest. But my That's favorite amazing. book, which is right here, I can't pull it out though, cause something's propping. <laughs> it's, it's Salgado's Genesis, um, but it's a, a beautiful book. And I, if, if you wanna know who I think is like person that just, you know, gets me really excited about, uh, he's, he's unreal, absolutely unreal, best. It's awesome. <laughs> cool. Well, let's so, get to some uh, Lightroom editing and preset yeah, creation and all that good stuff. Let's do it. Um, before we do that, I know I briefly touched up on this, but I just want to hammer the point down again. Um, we do have the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge going on, so I encourage you all to go ahead and submit based on today's challenge, which I can actually go to. Um, so bear with me while I switch. Here we go. All right, so today's challenge that Val just did, if you were watching the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge before we went live, um, she was working with textures, and it's to create an object such as a bucket or farm tool, then give it a realistic finish using blood modes and textures. Okay, so if you all are able to work on that between now and we'll be, this I'm working Pacific time here, but between now and 11 a.m., then Christy and I will actually be able to give you feedback based on the submissions uh, that you submit between now and that deadline. Um, we usually do have a little countdown timer to let you all know, but we're working with a bare bones production here because we are obviously not in our studio. So I can't bring that up right now, but I'll give you periodic reminders of um, when that deadline's coming on. But for the most part, we'll be working with Christy and Lightroom. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to your screen and we're on it. Great. Well, talking about inspirations, like I really wanted to create and, and right now I think seeing beauty and how photography helps me see beauty is important. So I'm going to start by showing you guys some work that I did around my house, all five minute radio, um, five minute, um, five minutes walking distance in, in any sort of direction. And um, yeah, I'm going to show you some of that. Like Irving Penn had this amazing quote that is 
um, you're photographing a piece of cake can be art. Uh, and, and, you know, if you look at one of my other favorites, Edward Weston, he has these bell peppers that are just unbelievable. Um, they almost look human in the way he's photographed them. He's also got this beautiful head of lettuce that he's photographed. And check out Edward Weston to get inspiration for every day. Another person to check out is Joey Terrell, which is one of my fellow Nikon ambassadors. Uh, he's been doing some mushroom work from home. And I am so impressed with just taking mushrooms out of his fridge and photographing them. And Joey's quite a fun guy. So mushrooms come easy to him. Okay, so I love really bad jokes, really bad jokes, um, like dad jokes. So if you guys should share any in the feed, it'd make my day. <laughs> there Fun it is. Guy, There's mushroom. the dad joke. I knew it was going to yes. come out. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, we do home. have some people in the chat um, that are sucker for pun jokes and dad ah! jokes. So Christy from, yeah, from the way we've been interacting, she loves them. So if you have any, feel free to throw them out, throw them out in the chat. Great. All right, we're going to start over here with some shots from around home, right? <laughs> you guys are going to see my raws. <laughs> I don't like showing people my raws, but these are my raws. Um, so for me, one of my favorite things is I really like contrasty black and whites. Um, this image, it's so bright. The color is distracting, and I'm really drawn to the contrast and the different textures of the wing and the flower. So this was a bee and a, a dandelion. <laughs> so I'm gonna get straight into developing and we're gonna talk about creating presets. Um, majority of what I do is I've made a whole bunch of my own presets that I kind of go through, but we're not gonna use any of these because we're gonna create presets from scratch. Um, but the first thing that I always do with an image is I do my crop, right? So I'm gonna Smart. move in and do a crop that kind of just speaks the subject. Like a lot of times when I'm trying to figure out, let's, let's just reset that. When I'm trying to figure out where my eye moves, a trick that I use, um, which they teach you that you can take an image and flip it upside down and, and see where your eye gets stuck. Um, but for me, a lot of times in Lightroom, I use the little preview screen on the upper left. So when I look at the upper left, I can see that my eye is really drawn to the contrast of the green on the right side. And I find that to be distracting from the image. Um, so I'm gonna crop that out. So just a quick squint up in the upper left, it's like, since you can't see the full image, a lot of times it just helps me train my eye as to where it's going. Interesting, so you're using the little the little screen below Navigator as kind of a reference. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's so smart because I, I think we're so used to looking at things full screen that our eyes kind of become desensitized on all the little nuances of photography. But when you look at it in a different screen, and it's kind of making you, it's forcing you to kind of look at the photograph in like sort of another canvas, right? And that's where you catch yeah. those little things. So Exactly. Yeah. Great so even I like that. With this crop here, when I look to the upper left, I still get so drawn by these green areas right, right. here. So I'm just going to pull... Sorry, I'm gonna pull that down just a bit. I'm gonna use my thirds here. Um, I love these overlays that show you your thirds, um, but I'm also gonna show you something that I love with the overlays. Um, you can toggle these and there's so many different overlay modes. Um, there's overlays to see the different diagonals. Um, and how are you toggling those, Christy? Oh, I'm toggling just by hitting the O button, there you super go. simple. Um, but then one day when I was going through and toggling my um, overlays, <gasps> it's got the there Fibonacci spiral. The Fibonacci spiral, oh my our gosh. best friend. I was so excited. And not only does it have Fibonacci our spiral, but if you hit the shift in the O, you can toggle it in different directions. That, wow. I didn't even know you can change the orientation of that. It's amazing. So you did that by hitting <laughs> shift and O, right? Shift and O. And amazing. I use this. I love it. Learning all sorts of things here. <laughs> I use this all the time because I can dodge and burn in a way that helps lead the eye in this spiral towards yeah. the subject and how I want it, you know, how I want somebody's eye to move. So not Christy, only is I do it... have um I do have a horrible dad joke. Yes. Uh, horrible in a good way, Tim. But <laughs> as soon as he pulled the photo up, Tim goes, look, Hannibal Nectar. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, that's the one. Hannibal oh Nectar. Gosh. Good job, Tim. Bravo. So good. Okay, so that's kind of a crop that I like. I like all these circles going on. Can you guys see my mouse as I move it around? Yep, just we the, see it. Okay, cool. I love the, the way my eye's now moving. Um, this bee kind of pulls me in. I've got this great circle here. Um, the color's distracting, so I'm going to go ahead and take the color out, right? 
Uh, this black and white is a very muted black and white. Um, another way that I edit is I'm constantly looking at my histogram up in the upper right. Um, so I, I like editing according to that histogram and trying to pull my rich blacks in and pull rich whites in without blowing them up, right? So let's start by doing a little bit of the contrast. Now, if you hit the Alt button and pull your blacks in, you can actually see when your blacks start to show. Wait, am I going the wrong way? Oh, this is slow. Sorry, give me a second. Why not? Ah, there it is. Uh, you're so holding, I, um, I believe it's on Windows, you're holding Alt, right? To yes. kind of show what you're clipping. Yeah, so it's Alt on Windows and then Option on Mac. What you're doing there is where the whites or blacks start to be clipped. So if you see that triangle below histogram, it'll show you that your blacks are actually starting to get clipped and that's what's that's what's showing right now um, with the little, little dots that are appearing as she slides that. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm not as familiar with Max, so I appreciate. Um, hey, buddy. Um, is that My your dog? dog? Yeah, she's, she's got a beautiful dog. Chaco, you can come. Come here. She's crying Chaco. underneath. She's she's asking for an invitation to sit next to me. Come on. It's okay with me, buddy. You just gotta say hi to everyone. Are you gonna say hi? Yeah. You there guys. He is. Hello. That's a cute dog. <laughs> so this is Chaco Taco Pants. <laughs> That's her full name. Okay. Um, so now I've got much richer black and whites. It's a little too contrasty for me, but I'm just gonna kind of pull down. Um, I play with these a lot. I kind of move things around a lot. Um, and then I kind of see like, I'm actually gonna pull this back. Sorry, it's, it's, it's not an exact process, my workflow. Um, so I ended up pulling the whites down a little bit. I'm gonna pull the exposure up first. And now I'm starting to get something that I like. I'm starting to get a little bit more contrast that I like. Um, a good way to kind of learn about black and white contrast is to go in and, and actually look up Ansel Adams zone system. So Ansel Adams has set up um, this kind of uh, his way of processing and shooting. He has these 11 zones. Well, one of them's black, one of them's white. So there's like nine gray zones and he edits to, to maximize and all darkroom stuff to maximize the dyna dynamics of the blacks and whites. Um, and it's a great thing to study. I've got like all three books. These books are great on his print, the camera and the negative, <laughs> which yeah. kind of goes through his process of, of black Ansel and white. Adams is, is borderline the father of landscape black <laughs> and white photography. I mean, there is a lot to learn if you're studying black and white photography and just landscape. I mean, he, he's just got it all down. Ex yes, he's amazing. Um, so I'm just playing with this a little bit to what looks good. I'm not exactly sure how it looks on your screen and everybody's screens at home. Everyone's computers are going to be calibrated a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, another tool that I use that I love is I use the adjustment brush a lot. Now you can make all your own brushes and do whatever you need with brushes. Brushes are great. Um, brushes can take one specific area and really help enhance that area. Uh, this adjustment brush, one of my favorite adjustment brushes when I'm in black and white is Iris Enhance. <laughs> Just the default Iris Enhance. I don't know why, but I started playing with this and I'm like, oh my gosh, this brush is gorgeous. Super simple. Right. Interesting. So just, You're using an iris enhanced brush as kind of a way to dodge and burn. Yeah, right? as a way to really make those black and white pops. Yeah, it's that's so, so cool. And it's I assume it was meant for just, I guess, eyes if it's iris enhanced. But it was meant for eyes. For things. That's so cool. So it's like if you look like the let's see, um, the before and after, you don't see it so much. Um, you'll see it more in some of the other shots that I, I play with. Um, but I also, I, I love a little tiny bit of a vignette just to bring your eye a little bit more in. Um, and then, you know, I may honestly take the adjustment brush, make a new brush, and I may actually pull that black out a little bit because that black is just a little bit distracting for me. So I would go into the blacks and just lighten it just a touch. Um, so That's it doesn't awesome. trap This is looking eye. great. Um, I want to give some love to the chat. Um, let us know who who in the chat right now shoots black and white photography. Um, personally, I tend to just stick to landscape. Black and white is a totally new zone for me, which is why I'm learning a lot on what Christy's doing. 
Um, but I'd love to know who else is shooting black and white photography or edits um, in black and white in general, because we're learning some great tips right here. Oh, we've got Cody Bear saying Iris Enhance works so well. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> the funny Cody thing Bear, is he's going to be live um, at the end of the day with Voodoo Thou. <laughs> hey, Cody Bear. Welcome, welcome. The one thing Paul Training in the chat. Whenever I decide, I'm like, I think I want to go back to color. And then I put in color and I'm like, ah, it's too uh, saturated. Back to black like, and white. I got to yeah. cut out the Iris Enhance spots that I made. <laughs> yeah, we have Christina saying, me, me, me. Christina, what type, <laughs> of, uh, what type of black and white do you shoot? Or do we do portraits, landscape? Go ahead and tell us. Um, we have a Kanshka. Sorry if I butchered your name. Um, hi, Jack. Can anyone suggest a good typography book? Um, I don't know about typography. We know about photography. <laughs> We've been making uh, plenty of recommendations of those. Uh, William says he does. Um, yeah, so we got some people on the chat that are working with black and white. So that's I'll awesome. I'm a little cool. obsessed. Yeah. I'm going to pull this overlay back up just because I love the Fibonacci spiral overlay. And that's do you guys good. see how that little vignette. Um, so if you take the vignette away, there's a lot going on on the sides. Yeah, there is. There's a lot of bright pixels yeah. now. It's, I'm kind of conflicted on where to look. Exactly. But you see this Fibonacci spiral with the, so if I take this, I wish I could keep that over it as I edit, but I kind of just toggle back and forth a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then- There you go. Yeah. So now look when I put the Fibonacci spiral over the image. Do you see how your eye is starting to move a little bit more? I mean, this is a hard thing. And half the time I feel like I'm trying to do it and I'm working towards it, but I don't always succeed. But I feel like this is moving in the right direction for me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. This is definitely working. The focal point has definitely become the, uh, remind me again what insect that is? Oy. Or I the, think it's, a, the insect I, it's some sort of, it's gotta be in the bee family. Yeah. Um, well, according to know. Tim, it's Hannibal Nectar. So we can just call him Hannibal Nectar. <laughs> He or she. Oh, I know. It's like, I love all the little pollen and the details. Yeah. And all the detail. What did you shoot this with? I shot this with, um, I actually have my gear here just in case this question came up. Um, I shot this with my Z7. Um, so this is my Nikon, Nikon mirrorless camera. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So it's you're a Nikon, <laughs> Nikon photographer, right? I definitely am. I'm, I'm on their ambassador team. I'm Nikon Amazing. through and through. Um, but this camera is 45.7 megapixels, um, even wow. with this adapter. So this is a FTZ adapter that adapts the, um, the lens. So it works with the Z7, but the details in the files, um, this I is mean, the 105. Very Pro, evident. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. beautiful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the, what I do my macro work with. <laughs> yeah. We have some more people, um, chiming in with black and white. Um, Akanchka saying, I love black and white. Keith says my, my traditional photography, non-digital was always black and white. Christina chimed back in saying mostly portraits. So yeah, a lot of people working with black and white photography. Um, oh, and then let us know while we're at it, um, what, what what are you shooting on? Are you shooting digital? I believe, is, it, is that Z7 mirrorless? It is, it's a mirrorless camera. So yeah. And I'm, you're adapting um, the older lenses with that adapter, right? So you can kind of yeah. keep up, yeah. I think Nikon, that's one thing that it definitely shines with is their lens ecosystem and how you can just use them in so many bodies. Definitely yeah, agree. That's yeah, <laughs> definitely that's awesome. agree. Um, okay. So I actually like this. I like this edit. I like the contrast. Um, you know, if I hit the backspace key, um, you can see the before and after. So that's the, the, the image out of camera. And then that's the after edit. So for me, I, I like this edit. Like this is yeah, kind of how that, I edit. I think that came out great. Um, but now I'm like, you know what? I really like the contrast. I like how I pulled the blacks and whites. I'm gonna make a preset out of this. So I wanna show you guys this building presets. Let's see it. J right. Jumping so. into presets. <laughs> I like when I get something and I'm like, this works for me. I got great range in the whites. I got great range in the blacks. Um, so over on the preset side, you hit this plus button to add a new preset to your Lightroom. And then you go to create preset. Okay, so I'm gonna call this Adobe black and white one. So I remember oh. that this is the one. Okay, so you've got all these setting options, right? Um, the one thing that I wanna make sure that I don't pull over is my adjustment brush. Oh, I don't even have it on there, cool. And real uh, quick, Christy, we do have a question from Michelle. She's asking, do you shoot in black and white with the picture controls on Z cameras? I do, I actually do a lot of that. Um, but for, 
uh, the editing, I, 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 I didn't do that as much because <laughs> I wanted to show you guys kind of a standard out of camera shot. But nowadays, um, and I can even pull up and show you some of the images I've done with my dog and um, oh, the editing out. time is so quick because of the fact that the camera, you know, I, I've changed my black and white settings to add the contrast. And so the mirrorless, because you can you can see the final output before you press the shutter, I get my black and whites now in camera a lot, but I felt that that would be a hard thing for me to show in Lightroom. So I didn't put those images in here, but I can show you what kind of some of my out of cameras look like if you guys are interested. <laughs> awesome. Patty in all caps goes, I didn't know there was an adapter. <laughs> well, now you know. Thanks for tuning in. It's amazing. Mind blown. <laughs> Um, sure. Tim, Tim has now become my, my pseudo countdown timer. Um, he says there are 56 minutes until the challenge. It's closer to 54 minutes now, but thank you, Tim. Yes. Great reminder. Again, we have about 54 minutes left until we're going to jump into discord to look into the, uh, Photoshop daily creative challenge submissions based on today's challenge. So great call out. All right. Wonderful. Let's get back to thank the you. preset making. Okay. So, you know, I'm just going to keep this as is. I'm going to keep everything selected. I'm going to, yeah, um, and then hit create. And now I've got my Adobe black and white, right? So it should do everything except for those brushes. Um, the brushes are things that I, I have to add in. I like to do the individual dodging and burning now that I don't have to use my old technique with the cardboard and everything like that. I like to make sure I get all the spots right. Uh, so around my place, I actually like being a photographer that does nature that lives in the DC area. I'm about 45 minutes south in Sterling, Virginia. There's not a lot going on in this neck of the woods. <laughs> so I'm going to bear with me. Um, I did find some geese. <laughs> That's a beautiful so, shot. Well, thank you. That reflection is pristine. I love that. I was really happy with this. I mean, I yeah. sat there and watched the sleeping goose for ages. It was, it was beautiful. Um, but for me, I, I, I love when I can see the shapes. Um, and you know, this, it kind of reminds me of like a, a Pokemon ball or something. Like there's, yeah. there's definite like shapes in there that I got excited when I photographed and I waited for, for, um, her or him to, to turn in a very specific way so that it would kind of make it a little bit more abstract. Um, but I find that the like little white on, on, on their face and, and kind of the white on the, um, on the feathers, it, it, it played with each other really nice. Um, but for me, um, first thing about this image that doesn't work is the crop. Um, looking in the upper left, there's just way too much space on the top and way too much space on the bottom. Um, so I always start with my crop and I'm actually for this one, I'm actually going to toggle that off. Um, I kind of keep it like that. For this one, I'm going to go with a one-to-one -one crop, right? Mm-hmm. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm just cutting out the excess. The top and the bottom is excess to me. Right. So let's see. I like this crop a little bit more. It plays with the circular shape. It makes it look like, I think it's kind of fun. Um, but yeah, no, that's kind of, and then I'm going to go and kind of correct the color a little bit. Um, I'm going to just do that by simply moving. To me, it's got a little bit, I just kind of want to get rid of some of that yeah. How do you usually how do you usually tackle color? Are you going something that visually looks better to you, or are you or what, what's your approach when you're messing with the temp and the tint? I just do it by eye, honestly. Like yeah. I kind of move it simply and and just kind of see what what works. Um, I'm also you know looking up at my histogram. I really like that I've got a lot of rich blacks over here. Like I like that nothing is clipping. Um, but also like, I, I like this, this area to be dark. I would like a little bit more on the histogram to be on the light side. Um, so that when it gets printed, it doesn't look muddy or, you know, like I like things to be contrasty. So I'm going to edit by looking at this histogram and pull my exposure just a touch and move things a little bit closer to that right side. Nice. I don't want the background to go white, white, cause I think that would just be too much. Yeah. Um, um, but for me, super simple on this, I, let's see, I not sure. Let me just check and see what this looks like as a black and white. Oh, I actually like ooh, it as a black and white. I like that kind of too. Fun. Yeah. Um, we're going to try, let's do it with the Adobe. Oh, actually that's it's a got fun. Like a softer, it kind of adds, yeah, 
It's like a That's softer a fun look black to and white. It. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can see a little more texture. But I'm going to go ahead and just pull the exposure just a little bit m more. Um, it's the beauty goodness. of presets, everybody. I mean, if you you can just kind of slap them on at the click of a button and just see all these different ways the photo can look just on custom presets that you make. Exactly. And I keep things super simple. Okay, now this one is going to be a great one to show you the iris enhance again. So let's look and let's just paint right here. Bring out just a little bit more in the eye. Bring out a little bit more in the reflection. Ashi is saying, wow, I want the color scheme on that photo. And she's asking if it's okay to take the color scheme, which I assume she'll probably just take a screen grab of it and use this color scheme. Yeah, but make sure you send me what you do with it. I love people creating. So yeah, <laughs> I would love idea. to see the great final idea. output if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah. Ashi, if you do do the color scheme, um, go ahead and share with us. We'd love to see what comes out of the inspiration that we're showing you all. I think that'd be great. Let's talk a little bit more about this iris enhance and why it's the doing iris enhance art yeah I love it. it's back so yeah when you click on iris enhance like what it does is it just adds a little bit of clarity it adds mm -hmm. just a pop of exposure it adds a ton of saturation which you're not going to see in the black and white obviously but i like just that little tiny bit of added clarity a little tiny bit of exposure and i think that it, it really just adds a little bit of sharpness a little bit of you know to so you can edit these brushes however you want but let me show you the before and after so that's the before and after the brush you see how it nice. give you just makes your eye go to to the geese's eye just a little bit easier mm -hmm. you see what i'm does that work for you guys or is that yeah, I, I oh. think it works. It's those subtle nuances, I think, right? Like just just this little thing may not do anything, but when you start adding all those little dodging and burning, it's like all those things that make the picture and really start to divert your eye towards that focal point, which is, in this case is the eye. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, Keith is asking, are these raw, by the way? And I think you are Yeah, raw, these right? are all yeah. raw. These are all NEF files. So they're all... Um, yeah, that's the proprietary raw format for Nikon. So if you see an yeah. NEF, then they'll tell you it's a raw photo from Nikon. Canon is CR2, Sony is... I forget what AW is. something another? Yeah. A, I don't... Yeah. So sure. if anybody's <laughs> getting into photography and they're debating the JPEG or RAW, I really encourage you all to shoot RAW just because it holds so much information. And even with how cameras are getting these days, they just keep adding more megapix megapixels and more information that if you underexpose or overexpose a shot, not by just extreme measures, you'll be surprised how you can bring some of them back just by shooting RAW. And again, it allows you for all these creativity edits that we're doing. Um, the image would really start to break down if we were working with JPEG. But since we're shooting with RAW, I mean, you can really, really get creative with these things. For sure. I was shooting RAW. It's, uh, um, one of the things about having it so light around the edges, if, if I put a vignette in, it's going to muddy up that white. Um, so I, I, looking at the image, I kind of have a feeling it's not going to work. And the vignette, to me, doesn't work. So I'm going to keep that off. Um, also, I do find the reflection to be just a little bit on the bright side. Um, it's a little like the black doesn't feel as rich. So I'm going to take the adjustment brush and I'm going to take exposure and I'm just going to grab this bottom part right here. Okay. And I am going to, you know, maybe exposure is not right. Let me grab the black. I'm just going to make the black just a little bit richer on the bottom. I'm going to bring just a little bit more clarity so it doesn't look. Yeah, so I would probably do that. Oh, and I can show you guys kind of the before and after. I love this tool. Are you doing the, I think it's the backslash. I'm doing key. the backslash, yeah. Yeah, so this is a great, great tool or quick shortcut. If you just hit the backslash key, it'll just show you how you started and where you are. And it's great because, you know, you're messing around with a camera or a photo for a while and then it's kind of inspirational almost, right? It's like, well, look at all this. Look how it looks now based on how it started. It's yeah. I love toggling it on and off just to see where the edit is going. Exactly. Um, um, I have a quick question for you, yeah. Christy, from Steven. He's asking, do you ever use the individual color sliders in black and white mode or do you just keep it in color and desaturate? Ooh, I just desaturate, but I'm interested to kind of see how that would work because that sounds like it could do quite a bit, possibly. Yeah. 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 Thanks for the suggestion. Yeah. Like one of my things is that like 
For me, Lightroom, I've picked up the tools and what I like to use. Um, but a lot of times, even in my workshops, my students, they have all these tricks and techniques and, and new things and, and you learn things all the time. Um, so I'm always excited to kind of hear like what can help enhance black and whites um, or what can actually enhance a Lightroom workflow. Like I was um, watching some of these other Adobe lives just the other day to prep for today. And I learned something that I, I didn't know, which is quite amazing. Like if I go to this next image, I learned that if you hit the previous button, you get all your previous edits just oh. like that. And I was is like, that, um, I think our, I think our cameras are blocking it. So let me, let me move, uh, let me move us real quick. Then you can hit that button again so we can show them. Uh, just uh, just our little cameras were blocking the button. There we go. Okay, so oh, show us oh. again real quick what you did. Okay, so here's the image of the next image that I... Here's the... So when you go to the previous button... Yeah, there it is. I always thought previous was like previous image or whatever, yeah. but it's like, let's take all the previous edits you've done and apply it to the next image. Did you get that from... I think it was Jesus and, and Matt? Yeah, uh, I was yeah, going... I, I watched I learned that, that one yesterday. Too. <laughs> I was wow, like, was... how did I not know that? Yeah. I mean... So it's, you know, it's, I think we can all learn from each other. Like I am, no, am in no way a, a master at Lightroom or anything like that. I'm a photographer that uses it in a way that fits my, my editing and my, um, the tools that I need, but I, it's, it's, it's a beast. There's a lot to learn. <laughs> so yeah, always excited um, to kind of hear. There's, that's the beautiful thing about these shows and all the different workflows and the people that come on is they all have their own workflow, right? And no workflow is right or wrong. It's just how it's most efficient with what you want to do with your photography. But it is, it is like, I have to watch these, right? It's part of my job and I also love watching them. And it's just, there's so much I learned from watching Christy or Matt or Jesus. They all have their own little workflows and it's just this little like giant bucket of knowledge that you can pick all these little tools that are in line with what you do and sometimes make things even easier. Exactly. So yeah. I think that that's pretty exciting. And, um, you know, hey, I mean, speaking I, of Jesus, he's in the chat. Hey, Jesus, oh good to see you. Gosh. Welcome, welcome. He's amazing. I adore that guy. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Ramirez is awesome. He's a good friend and we work with him a lot. He's, he's great. Wonderful. <laughs> great. Okay, well, I actually like this edit. I'm going to make another preset of this. I'm going to call it. So I'm going to go up to that create preset. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and just do Adobe black and white number two. Um, I'm gonna keep everything on because I haven't done anything that, you know, it's all simple editing. Um, so now I've got both of my presets. Um, so a lot of times, like the thing about building presets, um, a lot of times when I just go out for a shoot and say I've gone out and photographed bears or something, like the lighting is all gonna be one very consistent, you know, a lot of times it's very consistent, uh, you know, the, the camera settings are exactly the same. I'm um, shooting pretty, you know, like I'll shoot for like during a, a, a span of, you know, the morning or whatever. So I find that I build presets at the beginning of editing a series of images. So I'm building presets all the time when I'm, you know, um, starting to edit new projects um, just to kind of make sure the light, the color, the contrast and everything is is extremely consistent. So I'm I actually build presets all the time, but I. I don't go in and I'm like, hey, I'm gonna do this preset or that preset. I, I build them and then I see what works for the individual shoot, you know? Awesome. So this image, while I composed it in camera pretty poorly, I love the expression and the, the shapes. Um, so we're gonna try to work with this image a little bit. I'm gonna start with a crop, like I always do, start with my crop. And for this image, I might just play with the rule of thirds. So this is, you know, this, chart here shows you the, the thirds and a lot of times these these powerpoints um are a great place to kind of like keep your subjects right in the powerpoint i'm going to play around with keeping that in the bottom third um i'm not sure sometimes you, you got to break your rules a little bit i need the full shape of the neck yeah so i like that crop um because i really love the texture in the water above it i'm gonna toggle my oh wrong button sorry it's like when you're doing something live, it's, it's you, you tend to hit the wrong buttons, you know? The beauty of live. I know, right? Um, um, we have a quick question from Krishna. She's asking, she, I think, sorry. Uh, when When is the good time 
or when is the good time to save and edit as a preset? Sometimes when you're like, you've worked in your black and whites or, you know, your histogram looks good and you're like, this preset looks great with this image, um, or when your edit looks great, then you just kind of save it as a preset. I usually do it with a couple of the first shots that I do. So it's like, um, you know, if I, if I have a whole series, it's like the first couple of shots, I'll, I'll make them perfect in black and white, I'll make them perfect in color, and then I'll save that preset. Um, and then I'll use it throughout the shoot. And now I've got a collection of like, all of my little silly presets, which are, you know, contrasty black and whites, black and whites with a little more texture, black and whites that are a little more muted. Um, you know, black and white contrast is like, I don't know. So I, I kind of mine, you know, I've got my little pops in color and stuff like that. So I just find that when I get in, get to a point where I really love one of my edits, I, I save it, you know? Awesome. Does that answer? <laughs> Does that answer your question if I could? Yeah, yeah, I think it does. Okay, cool. Alrighty. So I'm, I'm actually John gonna... Eric in the chat, and I'm, I'm only calling him out because he is the king of puns and dad jokes, Christy. Yes! So look out for him. He oh my god, you'd make me so happy. Uh, John, so. if you weren't here earlier, Christy loves dad jokes, so. Any of them. I love them. Yeah. So I'm going to actually enhance this blue a little bit. I'm going to pull it down, enhance the contrast just a little bit without making sure I'm clipping anything, which I'm not. Um, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this image because it's not one of my favorites, but I'm just going to do a simple black and white or simple color edit on it that just pulls that color in a little bit. I'm going to make a preset on this one. And on this preset, um, one of the things that I want to I want to alter this just a touch. I want to take out my um, uh, color adjustments, okay? One of the reasons that I'm doing that is just because I feel that like me moving the, the color a little bit, it's like color needs to be very specific to the image. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna call this Adobe Color Punch, Color Contrast. So this was just adding a touch of contrast, adding a little bit of a vignette. And this is something that I use all the time. Okay, so I just created that preset. How are we all doing? Are we doing good? Doing <laughs> okay, awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I started getting a little bit, trying to get more creative with my in-camera files. Um, I started playing around a little bit with multiple exposures. Um, with the geese and I got some shots that I kind of enjoyed playing around with textures. So these are all in-camera files. Um, the Nikon... How, how did you do that? Was that an in-camera setting where you just put two photos of each other, almost like a manual double exposure? Well, the great thing about mirrorless cameras is they have a little halo. Um, so you take your first exposure, you put it on manual exposure or multiple exposure, and you can pick how many images to overlay. You could pick one, two, 10, however many images you want to overlay. And when you take your first image, you'll see it as a ghost and you can, you can put that over however you want to, you know, however you want to line it up. Um, and so I use a lot of the different multiple exposure modes just to kind of play with what I'm seeing outside and to really play with shapes and textures. Um, and, you know, beforehand, I, I came from the film days where you rewind film, <laughs> you know, or, or not advance your film and you do your multiple exposures that way. You didn't have to be perfect with lining it up. Mirrorless cameras make it kind of easy. Um, so yeah, I started playing around a little bit and there's different overlay modes. There's um, like, this was taken with average, which it takes the average light and dark and you know, it averages everything together. Um, there's other, like a lighten mode, which will take the lightest part of the image. And then the darken mode, which takes the darken. If you've ever seen like the silhouettes where people have like trees inside their bodies, um, I'm, I get things back to front. I think that's the lighten mode. Uh, it might be the darken though, but I, like I said, I switch things up a lot, but um, playing around the different multiple exposure modes is a lot of fun. So I was, you know, I'd been watching this goose sleep and everything like that. And I was like, you know, I'm just gonna kind of play around. Like for me, I'm gonna start with the crop again. Um, I find the crop to be, you know, I'm just, I actually think that this is gonna go better as a square crop because I really like all the textures and everything going on in the center of the frame, all these shapes. I wanna make sure I complete my shapes. 
But do you guys see this, like the neck of the swan on the left go into the neck of the swan on the right, and then there's the reflection on the top. Now, how I did this with multiple exposure, I actually like sometimes taking my first exposure and then flipping my camera upside down or flipping it, doing four exposures and doing one on each each side. Um, so it's, it, it's been a lot of fun to kind of play with, you know, different multiple exposure modes. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna look and just see what my presets are gonna do to this, right? So like that's first presets, it's a little bit on the light side, but I'm actually kind of liking what it's doing. Um, and the black and white too is, is a little bit muted for this image. Um, one of the things I'm actually going to go ahead and use Adobe Black and White One, and then I'm going to alter it from here. Because a lot of times after you set a preset, you got to go in and, and work it just a little bit more. Um, but I'm I'm really liking the abstraction and the shapes and, and the play. I mean, this isn't a image that'll end up in my portfolio, but I think it was a lot of fun to go outside and shoot this, and I, I had a lot of fun doing it. So I'm going to go over in here, and I'm going to pull these blacks just a touch more. I'm going to yeah, do my brush, do a little bit of iris enhance on the areas right here. Oh, that's exposure. I got to change it over to my favorite brush. Uh, yeah, there we go. Just to kind of pull in just a little bit of detail because I love how the feather detail is coming out. You see how it's popping just a little yeah. bit with a brush. Um, check my crop overlay. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Move that just a little bit. I'm going to pull in. It's already got a bit of a vignette, which I like. But the vignette the thing I like about light, one of the many things is I like how much you can manipulate your vignette. So you can make it kind of go in a little bit more. And I really like, I really like your eye to be drawn in. So this really draws my eye in. Do you guys kind of see the shapes and the movement that's happening from yeah, looking at the have upper some left? Geometry going there that's just really taken in the eye. Yeah, so that's kind of how, how am I doing? Am I going too fast, too slow? Am I going good? <laughs> no, I think you're doing great, yeah. Wonderful. So we'll do one more. Okay, the one thing about multiple exposure is in the Nikon cameras, um, your final image is going to be a JPEG. So it'll give you, um, you know, this image was two images that were both shots. So it gives me the two raw files and then the JPEG. So these are the out of camera unedited JPEGs. Um, so you, that's one of the reasons why the presets aren't going to literally work as well is because when you set up a preset, it, it's, it's to handle the dynamics of, of whatever you're editing. And if it's a raw file, um, and then you try to use that preset on a JPEG, it's, it's, it's usually not going to work. Uh, if that makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, this was another situation where I saw the ducks. I did clean up the water a little bit. I did some spot removal a little earlier today, just so you guys didn't see as much dirt. And I'd probably clean it up a little bit more because it is a bit of a dirty image. Um, how but would this... you do that real quick, just so we can show people how to use that tool? Yeah, like sure. 30 second. So you see all my little spot removal oh, tools? Oh, there they are. Yeah, it's pretty easy. You just click that, there it is. Oh, oh check those out. So you yeah. just take the spot and then you do that. Right. It's amazing. Adobe Sensei magic. All you do is literally put that circle over something you want and it'll find something else that will pretty much replicate that and kind of feather it. And it's, it's a great tool. Yeah. And I wasn't trying to like create work so fast, like, you know, in the last couple of days. And I probably would wait till this goose ended up in an area that maybe didn't have as much dirt reflecting. Um, so, you know, because I usually don't do that much to an image. I don't do that much spot removal. Um, but in this case, um, you know, I did. <laughs> so we're going to go back. We're going to play a little bit here. I'm going to move. The thing about symmetry is when you've got an image and you're trying to play with symmetry, try to play with it as much as you possibly can. So for this, I'm actually going to use all of these third lines and I'm going to make this as symmetrical as possible to kind of really play with that. Um, so this was a multiple exposure image done with the overlay mode um, average again. We're done with the uh, multiple exposure average. Um, so that's kind of, I really liked the textures that kind of came out. I thought it was cool shapes. Um, so now we're going to look over here and just see what our presets kind of look like, you know, and for me, yeah, because this is a JPEG file, like none of these presets should work too much. Um, but I am kind of obsessed with these textures. So I'm going to keep this one in color. I'm going to start by increasing the contrast just a touch. 
really want rich blacks, but I'm also seeing that there's a real lack of whites. So I'm gonna pull my whites up just, yeah. Now all of a sudden you're seeing this nice light come in on the, the chest of the bird, which I think is nice. I'm gonna pull in and do a little bit of vignette. Okay, now to me, it looks a little on the green side. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of that green away, just a touch. Yeah, something along those lines, super simple, right? I'm not gonna save this preset because I did it on a JPEG and I barely ever use JPEGs, um, but you know, there's the before and after. I can see the spots, spots. Yeah, there you go, before and after, all so those spots gone. Super simple. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I had a lot of fun with out there is like, <laughs> We have new neighbors and our new neighbors have put out this uh, amazing bird feeder, which has given me a new friend and me going around my neighborhood and photographing. I've all of a sudden made friends with this guy and he keeps popping up and he keeps hey, doing this thing with his hands. Out. And he's like, the it's like him telling me, I love you. I don't know. <laughs> I think he's like, do you have food for me? But really, I'm just like, oh, it makes me want to hug you. So it's like squirrel. He's so furry. He's squirrel. got his winter coat on or something. Right? He's so cute. Well, I think the neighbors are giving him a lot of food. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah. I think they're getting mad at this guy. I think it's supposed to be more for the birds. But, you know, I, I, I can't help. But I know it's like, there's part of me that's like, I can't believe I'm going on Adobe and I'm going to show images of squirrels. But... I love squirrels. I think That's they're awesome. awesome. And I think that like when I moved overseas, like I lived in Australia for a while, it's like I really miss them because they're quite beautiful. So we're going to start with our crop. Like I'm really distracted by this over here. I don't really like it, but I really like this little expression. So I'm going to pull this squirrel over to the third, right? I kind of like that. A little bit of spare space mm. over here, a little... But we're going to go ahead and check out the presets. Check out that black and white preset and how it kind of just works on this squirrel, right? Really brings his eyes out. I know, right? It looks yeah, cool. Like so we're going to... listening going. Yeah. Is that, the, is that sort of the city in his eyes? Is that kind of what I see? Actually, check out the Nikon files. That yeah. is where That's I live. That's crazy. <laughs> That's my condo, right? The you can see The quality of my... these cameras is just... <laughs> so crazy to me i was like oh my god i can see my house fish eye from his eye a reflection that's so cool Isn't that crazy i think that's so like yeah that's we awesome. hang out on that balcony all the time um so quick question from krishna mm -hmm. he is asking in your presets do you include graduated filters and radio filters so is that one oh. of the things that you have the check boxes on you know, no, I don't actually, but I love graduated filters. I kind of use that image per image if I need to. So here we've got our graduated filter. Um, and I, I use these a lot when I'm doing my landscape work to pull the sky down. Um, or sometimes like the whale shark shot, I ended up using a lot of graduated filters because one side of the water was a little bit lighter than the other. So the um, the vignette didn't work as well. It didn't, it didn't resonate. So um, I find that graduated filters are so image to image that I don't put them into my presets unless I'm editing a whole series of landscape work. So great question though. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was an awesome question. Thank you. Keep them coming. And I'll show you guys some graduated filters too, because I think that they're so useful. I'm going to pull this down just a little bit more. I like sit there and mess with my edits so much. Um, so I'm going to pull out my favorite brush and just, I am going to enhance his eye. Check that out, right? There you go. And I got something in my camera. Tim says enhance, enhance. You know how you watch those CSI shows and they're like enhance and it's crystal clear quality and you're like, that's not true. But it is with this camera. <laughs> you really can enhance. <laughs> So on this preset, I've built just a little bit more. I've added, and going up here, a lot of times, like you can even pull your histograms left and right, which I like yeah. doing to like pull my shadows and stuff. Um, because I'm constantly looking to, yeah, I would honestly I think that looks really good to me. And you can see a little bit of the vignette, which bothers me on the left side. So maybe this is a case where I would pull the vignette down. Um, yeah, I like that better because edits, you don't want people to see your edit. They, you want people to see the the final product. Like you don't want people to see the work. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to add this preset. I've got a little create preset for the squirrel, right? So Adobe, um, I'm going to call it uh, just BW3 because, OK, let's do that. Create. I got my squirrels preset, right? Okay. 
All right, so I'm gonna show you guys, I have a lot of these photos. Um, but yeah, no, just a super simple squirrel shot. Like for the iris enhance that I did in the eyeballs, I actually, you know, love this little area. I might pull in a little bit more. One of the things too about, it gives just a little bit of kick and texture to the fur, which I think is nice. So I'm doing control Z to get rid of my brush stroke. But whenever you do the adjusted brushes and you put your mouse over, you can see kind of where you, where you ended up applying this brush. So it comes out in red and I can add to that and just add just a little bit more. Maybe I want his nose to come out cause it's so cute with the whiskers, you know, just little tiny bits, right? I see. So there's my squirrel. I'm gonna move on to ladybugs. <laughs> Um, Ashi has a great comment, which yeah. I think is cool to call out. She says, you know what? I always check eyes for reflection. Gives me insight on what was going on while the photo was shot. That's um, awesome. It's true. If you, if you ever want to know, like if you're looking at a portrait photography and it's really sharp around the eyes, if you really zoom in on the eyes, you can actually pretty much always see some sort of light that was used. So it'll give you an idea of what type of lighting they use, right? Like they have a top light, a right light, a left light, obviously nothing if that lights behind them. Um, but yeah, I think that's a great call out. Great comment. That's a great comment. And while we're at it, another comment, Tim, of course, thank you for the reminder. We have about 25 more minutes until we jump into Discord to look at some challenges today. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. Okay, so for this ladybug, I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit. Um, I kind of want to move on. If we got 25 minutes, I'm gonna kind of maybe move past some of these just a little bit. So here's a bird that I found outside that had great lines and movement. Um, but now I'm gonna show you guys just some other images from local parks. So these weren't necessarily shot in the last week. These are kind of just done um, over the last couple of years, but they're all local to my house. So one day I was in the parking lot and there was a giant snake. Whoa, was right? this in your parking lot? Not my parking lot, it was a parking lot from like we were, I, I have a group that I go out with that like, um, we meet on Fridays to count bugs, um, survey bu insects. Um, and these guys have been doing it for 25 years. They've been going out and counting bugs. Um, so every Friday, um, they tally up all the dragonflies, butterflies, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and all the different creepy crawlers and damselflies. And, and so we're constantly out. And I think it's interesting though, cause like, do you guys remember like, you know, 15, 20 years ago when you were driving around and you'd have all these bugs in your windscreen. <laughs> have you really noticed that anymore, there's like, actually. yeah, there's no bugs in the yeah. windscreens anymore. Like the decline in the insect population is really catastrophic. Um, Cause the insects, they, they flower our, our fruits and they also, um, uh, they feed the birds. And recently a study came out that birds are down by like 2.9 billion. Um, so with the declining insect population, um, not only is, you know, flowering plants in jeopardy, but the bottom of the food chain with the birds and, you know, it's, it's quite catastrophic to our whole ecosystem. So the fact that these amazing like citizen scientists go out and count insects, I think it's just, it's, it's, it's beyond amazing what they're doing. And the fact that they just spend so many volunteer hours. Um, but the one thing it's taught me more than anything is I don't have to go far to marvel at wildlife. Like wildlife is in our own parks. It is in our own yards. And, and, you know, like I can go out and look at a dragonfly's eyes and it just brings me to somewhere completely different. And it's like being able to connect with wildlife in the DC area. It's, it's opened up quite a bit of, you know, love and appreciation in my world. So we were done with our bug count one day and I was in the parking lot over in Occoquan and the snake was in the parking lot. And so I got down on my belly and I started like photographing the snake. I actually did mostly video. Uh, that's one thing I like I about the- I you had a telephoto lens for that and you were pretty far away. I don't know how close you actually were. <laughs> I had this guy. This is hey, one of my favorite lenses. This is the Nikkor 200 to 500. 200 so, to 500, yep, that'll give you some range. <laughs> so this was all the way at 500. Um, but yeah, a lot of times my kits, literally the macro and the 200 to 500, those are, you know, those are the two lenses I use all the time. Um, so for me, uh, here's something else that I think is awesome. When I go into here, um, I'm going to, I want to straighten it up first and foremost. Like the ground is just like not straight. So I can take this little angle tool, draw a line, and it straightens it, right? Cool, right? Do you guys see that? I like that. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so I'm gonna pull this in a little bit. 
I'm gonna use this leading line and pull him over to the third, right? And now I'm gonna check out some of the presets that I've made today. Ooh, that's kind of almost spot on what I want, which is nice. Um, oh, I don't know why I called that one black and white three when it did color. Sorry about that. I actually love this. Absolutely adore this. I think the vignette's heavy. So I'm gonna pull that back. So I'm gonna start with the preset. I'm gonna pull that back. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast and I love this texture, these parts that are in focus. I'm gonna just go to the iris enhance. Now I'm gonna change this brush a little bit, add a little added more contrast, a little bit more clarity. And I'm gonna just go a little, oh, that was way too much just a little bit lighter um, because I wanna pull, and I'm gonna add to this brush. So I'm using, I'm just gonna add a little bit there, right? Actually, no, I didn't like the add. So I'm gonna control Z, go back, cause I want this to be dark right here. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna toggle back and forth. I'm gonna show you the before and after. So super simple with that preset, right? Yeah, that was great though. It really brought out the snake though, kind of give it that contrast from the background, especially it's underbelly, I'd say. Exactly. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what I do. Now I've got a little area here where I've must have had just a little bit of, so I'm going to take this area here. I'm going to spot remove that. I'm just going to draw so I can hold the button down and draw just a little bit there. And it's so smart that it can just, you know, sometimes you have to, yeah, it looks good. I don't have to do anything. That crop overlay works in that little spot that's bothering me. Now looking at the upper left, I kind of see that, I think that there's a nice balance to, to how my eye moves, like from the, the the line coming into the left, up the neck to the head and then back down. Um, I, think it, I think this looks pretty good. Um, I can try, I'm gonna do a graduated filter here. And with a graduated filter, you can do, I'm gonna do exposure. So I'm gonna select exposure. I'm gonna make it just a little bit darker because I kind of want a little bit, I see how dark it is in the, on the top part. I kind of want the bottom to be dark as well to kind of sandwich the light, if that makes any sense. Am I making sense? Yep. <laughs> cool. Sandwich the light. Yeah. It's kind of what the graduated filter reminds me of. You're just kind of sandwiching it from the top and bottom. So here's the before and after. Like I said, super simple. I don't spend a lot of time on editing in Lightroom because I, you know, the tool, I, I keep it simple. I keep it simple. I keep it to the eye movement. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how, how I do my process. It's awesome. And then squirrel, this guy kept coming squirrel. up, but check it out. I've got my squirrel preset, which was, which one was it? I, I thought it made this a This is a preset. different photo than the one you showed us, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. He really gets up close and close. He kept coming up and doing that same thing. So, so I, can, I can go back to this photo here and I can copy everything. And when I go to copy, I can even copy my spot removals. I can crop, uh, copy the crop and I can copy all of the local adjustments. With the local adjustments is going to be the brush that did the iris enhance. So if I copy this all to like edit this new squirrel shot. <laughs> oy, oy, what did I do? I must have had color not selected. Hang on, let me redo this. Ah, that's where I messed up. Yeah, saturation has to be selected. That's what I did in my preset as well. Like I said, doing things live, you make silly mistakes. It happens, we're all human. So here we go. So now it's like, you know, the thing about this is these eyes that I had, it's not in the right place, right? So a lot of times when I'm copying, um, you know, a, an edit, um, I would go back here and I would hit copy, but I would take away all the local adjustments and copy it this way and go back here. Let me go back to my, Oh, what is that? Are you there? Yeah. Still here. Oh, sounded like call waiting. <laughs> oh, weird. I got all these beeps on my phone. So we're going to go back to the import. Um, real quick. I'm just going to go, um, into the chat real quick. We have a question from John. Um, I don't know if you know the answer to this one, Christy. It's a little technical, um, but if not, 
Um, I can always redirect to help X, but it says, since Lightroom presets are XMP instead of LR template files now, are they shared with Adobe Camera Raw? Meaning if I install Adobe Camera Raw to develop a preset, it shows up in Lightroom too and vice versa. That's all you, Paco. <laughs> yeah, this, I mean, this one's, a, this one's a little too technical for me too, John. Um, I would just recommend going to HelpX. I know they have a whole, they have a whole forum on managing Adobe Camera Raw files. So you might be able to find your answer there. Um, we have one from German that says, hey man, everything is great, but what song is that? Um, I'm assuming it might be the last song. All our songs are from Chill Hop Records. They're great music to listen to, lo-fi. So we have a collection of about 500 different songs. So I couldn't tell you which song that was, but it is Chill Hop Records. Um, and yeah, a lot of other comments on just commenting about your photography. Christina saying, I love that squirrel's expression. <laughs> She's just kind of like, like, are you going to give me food or what are you doing? I'm such a fan of like uh, uh, Disney Pixar and, uh, you know, the movie Up where it's just like, 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 squirrel. That's, wow, you distracted. just named my favorite Pixar movie. <laughs> up, up is it. I oh. love it. So oh. I had to put the squirrels in just to kind of like, oh, goodness. Okay. So this is a great photo. Yeah, I oh. love dragonflies. Like I, and I love like the details in their wings and, you know, just what lens did you shoot to get that one? Because that is super is crisp and very up close. Super the macro. The 105 macro. So I've, I brought three of these prime? dragonflies. Uh, sorry, 105 macro. It's a 2.8 okay. lens. Yeah. It. Oh, so it's this. It's, it's this a great one. shot. I have this and then I have the 200 um, macro lens as well. So I've got these three. Um, buddy, you want to come sit next to me? You okay? Oh, no, that's not the one. So I've got these three. I shot a little bit different depths of field. Um, but I'm going to try to figure out which one I like the best and edit them and find a preset that I'm going to apply to all of them. Um, but yeah, no, my insect work, I do a little bit differently. in the fact that I do like shallow depths of field, like with insects, like the depth of field is, is, is so super small that, um, you know, a lot of times people bring flash units out and things like that, but I like having the eye drawn into the, the texture on the wings or, you know, something that's, it's, so I try to do shallow depth of field. Like anyone have a guess at, at what depth of field this was shot at? Cause a depth uh, of field, a shallow depth of field on a macro lens is like not the same as a shallow depth of field on any other lens. Like even the camera I have pointing at me is like a F2 right now, like doing. I would doing. say my guess would be a 1.8 for this one. <laughs> Let's look. Go so, I think you can wire. hit I and it'll give you the info. If you just oh, hit... nice. Yeah, okay. I, I. There I... we go. And then hit it again. There it's we go. An oh, F9. you shot it a nine. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's so crazy. super shallow, Way even off. at nine. Yeah, it's yeah. Super shallow. And like this one, I've pulled like, I like this info thing. That's cool. This is F14. Look at how shallow it is with the macro lens. That's crazy. Yeah, that's an F14. Usually yeah. I shoot, I speak landscape and F14 is going to make everything crisp. But here it's just still very, very shallow. Super shallow. Um, but this is, dragonflies are really interesting because like when they end up, um, when they emerge, um, kind of hatch, when, they, when they're newly emerged, they've got this period where they let their wings dry before they fly off. Um, and this is a good time to be able to get a little closer to take a photo because they're kind of just chilling out waiting for their wings to dry and they, they're, they're not as shy. Um, they're kind of in a you know, sleep type mode, but they're yeah, just chilling out. Um, but the cool thing about this, this period is um, you get these little bits of shine to the wings. So you get this little extra glow, which I love. Um, so this image here is is one that I am gonna I'm gonna check out my presets first and foremost, and look at the design and the details that come out with that black and white too, which I think is nice. But we're gonna build a new one. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna try to edit this one in black and white. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is my crop. Um, now I've already edited this image, so I'm gonna kind of show you guys what I did with it. Um, I actually went a little tilt. The reason I did a tilt was because the symmetry was just a little bit too much for me. So I did just a little tilt on the body. Um, let's see. Yeah, just to make it a little less, you know, uh, completely symmetrical. I liked that. It's just, maybe that's my style. Maybe it moves your eye in from the left, but this is kind of how I like to edit this image. Um, I'm gonna pull the saturation down. Okay, I'm gonna start with this exposure. I'm gonna pull the exposure up just a little bit, but I don't wanna clip those whites. 
Um, I'm going to add some contrast, um, which if you look at the histogram, it's kind of pulling the, the colors, the, the blacks more black and the whites more black, the whites more white. <laughs> I need to, um, but then I'm also going to like, just kind of play a little bit here. Okay. I'm going to add a vignette. I actually really like this simple edit. So I'm going to go ahead and make a preset out of this. It's got a heavy vignette. It's got great contrast. So I'm going to create a preset. And I think last time I had unselected saturation, which I'm going to make sure to select that this time. And I'm going to call this Adobe. I'm, going to, I'm just going to call this Adobe um, black and white. I'm going to call it zero because I really like this one. I have a feeling I'm going to use it a lot. Um, I don't want to put them, uh, make sure the transform is not clicked because that's when I did my little adjustment on the, on the angle. And I don't know if all the images are going to do well that way. So here, I'm going to create that. I'm going to go in, I'm going to brush things that I just want. Oh, I got a, I did exposure. I'm going to do my favorite. Sorry, you guys are going to see me do a lot of the same, but um, I think in every way, it's, it's all about just these little changes, these little differences. Um, I really like this detail. And I also, uh, that was way too much. So I'm going to pull the exposure down on that. So it's just super light. Um, I also find that if you look at the upper left, like, um, find that there's one spot that's really just trapping my eye, which is this area right here. It's just way too bright. So I'm going to do a new adjustment brush on the area up top and I'm going to brush it and I'm going to pull that as exposure down. I'm going to pull the highlights down. Actually, I think I like highlights down instead of exposure down just to kind of trap my eye there just a little bit less because I really like that detail. So this is a shot that, you know, an edit that I kind of I like of the dragonfly. So I'm going to go to the next dragonfly shot. I'm going to try this previous thing and see what that does. Ah. Thinking. Yeah, I don't like that at all. So I'm going to control. Yeah, it looks like I brought in the crop in too. Yeah, the cropping I didn't love. Yeah. Um, but I've made this new black and white zero presets without the cropping. I actually think that's kind of a fun, fun edit. Um, you know, I, I would probably, now you don't have to always try to fit inside a box here. So you can always like unlock this and do your own ratio for cropping. Like for me, it's all about these wings. Mm -hmm. So I think this would be a really cool, you know, elongated photo of just the wings yeah that that crop could be great for like a hero image for a portfolio or something because it's really wide yeah or a facebook banner <laughs> yeah yeah just anything banner related it's awesome right i still find this area to be distracting so i'd probably pull that down a little bit as well um but yeah no this is i, I love dragonflies i want to show you guys some more dragonflies yeah so let's you see got them. this little guy right oh, um see another newly emerged oh i actually i mean it's so funny because photographers either love things coming out of the corners or they hate it but for me i love things coming out of the corners i'm going to start with a square crop because i just see mm -hmm. this as a square crop and i'm going to have the stem go from the right corner all the way to the left corner by just cutting a little bit there you see that so simple super simple um i'm going to add a little bit of contrast and exposure just a touch because this image is already out of camera, like pretty contrasty, right? I think it's pretty cool. Okay. Now check him out. How cool is he? He's so pretty. Sorry. I love this guy. Those wings. Yeah. The, the bottom wing is really detailed. Yeah. I'm going to pull in just a little bit of a vignette. There you go. Yeah. That's really drawing the eye to the it. Eye. Yeah. And I'd honestly, I'm going to enhance this just a little bit more by, I want a little bit more light coming from here. So I'm using this graduated filter and I'm going to pull the exposure down just a little. And I like, there's a little tiny, let's see if that actually gets that. Yeah. Okay. So oh, something Thanks for like the reminder, that. Tim. We have five minutes until no we jump into way. this one. Okay. Okay. Well, so this is a pretty basic color pop. Uh, so I'm going to create mm -hmm. this preset as another Adobe, Adobe color pop that does the vignette. So, yeah, I've got another preset. 
um, which we've got five minutes. Yeah, I always, I... I always joke that um, live streaming just operates on a different dimension because before you know it, it goes by like that. Well, check out this color pop that I just did with this image. Like super simple edit, right? Beautiful. Super. Yeah. Oh, color pop. Stay there. Look at this guy's eyeballs. Because I want to show. Oh. All right. So I've got just. Oh, check out those eyeballs. I know, right? Super interesting. Um, okay. Because I've got all sorts of. This is a buffalo tree hopper. Check this guy out. All shot. Super close to home. Hey, Choco. Um, but this one, honestly, like go through real fast. Color pop looks great. You know, easy, quick edit. Um, but I wanted to show you either butterflies or infrared. You guys interested in infrared? <laughs> Let's see it. So I started doing some infrared bug work. Um, How did my... you do infrared real quick? How did you even get this <laughs> shot? My local camera shop, um, Ace Photo, has an infrared camera that they um, let me borrow. Um, the one thing about the camera is it, I was so excited about doing it and I ran out there and I forgot my blower. It wasn't my camera. Um, so there's quite a few uh, mm -hmm. dust spots. <laughs> so, so I have Nothing like, it was a dirty camera. Can't fix that. Yeah. And you know what's super cool is like sometimes when you have a series of images where you've got um, quite a few dust spots like this, um, you can take this and like yeah. go ahead and fix them like really fast, right? Um, and then since I have a series, I think that's all of them, right? Since I have a series of these infrared shots, this is like a dragon, or this is a grasshopper's kneecaps, which I think looks kind of like Iron Man. <laughs> it's like, that looks, I don't know, I'm, I'm upset. And then like changing the focus, getting the grasshopper's antenna, um, but also this, this beautiful prey mantis. So if I take this image that I've done the, you know, I've cleaned it up a little bit, I can shift and go all the way to the end and sync and sync, you know, my spot removals. Yeah, and since those spots are in the exact same spot of the sensor, then essentially you doing that is gonna target all of them, right? You don't have to do it individually. Yeah. You yes. might wanna double check it to make sure the place that it took it, it blends in well, but yeah. most of the time it ends up working out, so. Cause sometimes you need to adjust it a little bit because it'll hit a line or hit, hit some sort right, of, right. you know, like this one right here, I don't think worked as well. Um, so I just have to adjust it just a little bit, but all of a sudden my images are, are clean. Um, but for the infrared photos, I definitely need to build a preset because, uh, so it was an infrared converted Z7. Um, so mirrorless camera and he sent it off to a lab where they went into the sensor and they altered it to capture, you know, the, the infrared light. Um, which I thought would be really interesting to see what bugs looked like with infrared light. Uh, but as you look at the histogram, everything is like so compacted right in the middle. Um, so you got to add a ton of contrast. You got to work these mm -hmm. images a lot. You got to add a ton of black. You got to add a ton of white and just kind of like keep pushing. Whoa, there we go. Check that out. Yeah. Do, uh, do the before and after just with the slider so we can see. Oh. Uh, that there we go you're re that contrast really adds a lot um, we have a really cool comment from Susanna she goes uh, Christy you've given me a truly holistic appreciation of insects even as a <laughs> biologist I've always felt like tiny like a tiny subset of insects were adorable but most oh. were resilient pests to be battled so well, yeah thank you Suzanne it's Suzanne right was that her name uh, it was Susanna, I believe. Susanna, I really appreciate it. Insects yeah. are marvelous. And yeah. this this group has just completely changed my whole perspective of nature and, and how, yeah. you know, it's 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 been amazing. So we're going to create this real quick so that we can get through the infrared. I'm going to create the infrared, pre infrared mm -hmm. black and white preset, Adobe IR black and white, right? And here, I'm going to go here and let's see. Let's see how well that works. It doesn't really work no. as well there. It's a little bit too much, but I can always pull it back. Um, but yeah, kind of fun, right? This infrared. It got a little color there. I need to pull the saturation down. Um, but yeah, no, this is the same thing here. Where this one didn't. This one spot didn't work. Um, you know, and then I would go in and, and and finish these images. Like the eye is really trapped to the the dark spots, so I'd probably pull it out. So I didn't even need to do that spot removal. But yeah, just kind of having fun. Are we, we're really close to our. Yeah, well, right about now. Yep. So 
if you're ready, we can hop on to Discord. Um, I did take a quick glance at it and it looks like we didn't have many submissions from today, but we can definitely look at the ones that were submitted uh, between yesterday and today, which I think will be the animation one um, using Photoshop timeline. Great. So, uh, let's, let's go ahead and look at a few of those on Discord if you wanna bring it up. Um, and then okay. after that, we'll probably have some time to go back to do um, a couple more edits on Lightroom before we sign off for the day. Us, we still got a lot more coming up afterwards. Did you guys um, get my screen? Is that? Yep, yep, we got it. Let me just switch to this one. Cool. Cool. All right, so let's have a look at these. And it, uh, when we're looking at them, Christy, if you want to just click on the image. Hey, look, we just had one come in. Oh my gosh, yeah. came in like and, a shooting star. Love it. Yeah, if, if you want to click on it, then we'll get it uh, bigger. So. Let's have a okay. look at this one. And then these these challenges are going off of yesterday's challenge, which was uh, use the Photoshop timeline to animate a plant sprouting or vegetable growing. This one definitely took it to the space category, which is totally fine. I encourage you all to go with whichever direction you want or you're most inspired with. And here it looks like we have a shooting star over a desert. Um, do you have any comments on this one, Christy? Gosh, this, this picture makes me smile. I, I First and foremost, the color is just so nice. That yeah, it's a great choice purple. of color here. Yeah, it's kind <laughs> it's, of like the sunset going into the night effect. I love that. And it really makes you, you kind of feel that. And I, I even love the way that the shooting star like brings you into the frame and brings you to the cacti. I think that's really, really nice. Mm -hmm. um, I maybe would have liked um, the cactus on the left to be just a little bit higher so that the the bottom wasn't cut by the frame and it didn't cut through the landscape like it did. Um, but this is such a fun, colorful image. That's a great job with the challenge. Yeah, I think this is really fun. Um, the thing that obviously really sticks out is the color gradient used for sort of like this beautiful sunset into night um, scenery. And the one thing I'll note is I do believe that's a shooting star um, or some sort of meteorite. I think it'd be if we were to kind of be more realistic here, and of course we don't have to be, but maybe have it just kind of go across the sky so it doesn't look like it's coming right at us and exploding next to us, right? Like it could be cool just to just kind of play it going across the sky like an actual shooting star and like maybe even taking it a step further and adding like a little twinkle, you know? Like I think it would be really cool and surreal. So yeah, who was that by? Um, If we, if we escape that, we can actually see who submitted that. Um, that was from Oxcabal. Thank you for submitting that. That's really cool. We um, had another one just pop up. Um, okay. I think, I'm not sure what challenge that's referenced. Oh, it looks like it's animating. Oh, so we got some popcorn kernels literally popping. That's so cool. <laughs> that's awesome. It's like, yeah. do you want me to do this? Is this one okay? Or is it too? Yeah, yeah. That one's good. Um, do you have any quick comment? We can just give like a quick comment on it. Okay. I think this is a lot of fun. Like it's, it's very much like brings you into the scene. Like you, <laughs> I mean, this is like a, a Saturday night at my house, maybe minus the pretzels. Um, yeah. but I absolutely love like the popcorn and I don't know if you guys saw the moving popcorn at the beginning. It was nice that it was coming from its kernels and popping. Um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and I like yeah. how you just added one that didn't pop, you know, sometimes they don't all pop. So yeah, pretty nice <laughs> little Easter egg there. Um, cool. Let's scroll above. Let's see what else we got. Okay. Um, oh, this so is this one is using challenge. pixel sorting. Yeah, let's go up um, to the one above it. We can look at this one. Oh, how Great. fun. I love this like springtime, like plants growing. Like this is awesome. Yeah, so this one's doing um, not today's challenge, but yesterday's. It's the animation. So use the Photoshop timeline to animate a plant sprouting or vegetable growing. And I think this Gosh. one just kind of hits everything that was called for for that challenge, right? It's springtime. We have a, we have it sprouting. There's a rose coming out of it, which I assume would be a rose. Could be any type of flower. Um, but yeah, this is great. I really like how this came out. I think this is a lot of fun. I even like how the plant brings you back into the image, the way it's kind of arched in and the let it grow sign, like pointing towards the the plant. I think it's done really yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Speaking about composition and where the eye takes us to is at first you're looking at the plant and then the way it's curving into is just kind of pointing to let it grow. So there's some thoughtful composition going on there. I like that. Yeah. 
I would have maybe liked the treatment of the background to be a little different. Um, I can see some some purple and um, you know just this, this banning going on. Um, so mm -hmm. maybe just a, a little bit more thoughtful um, editing there. But I mean, this is beautiful. I even love the the Duck Valley Farm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> shout out to duck valley wherever that is and and maybe it's um yeah great job <laughs> yeah yeah great uh great comment on the background um i think if it's a stock image i mean don't be afraid to throw an adjustment layer on there and kind of play with the with the colors or the levels and see if um, that can kind of pay attention to that banding or bring the background down a little bit so our eyes kind of go into the foreground a little more um but we're just nitpicking at this point it's a great submission Cool. Let's see what else we got. More Duck Valley Farm. <laughs> Duck. Let's see. Uh, let's click on that one. See, there's an animation to it. Um, the one below it. The Duck Valley Farm. Let's see if anything loads. Nope. I think it just says Duck Valley Farm. I think they cool. were. Oh. Okay. Let's see this one. I made a glitchy waterfall. Let's see what was challenge number three. So this one was filters. Add a pixel sorting effect to any image using filters. So this one came out super cool. Uh, very creative. Love the use of colors that are going on here. Yeah, I love this. It actually like makes me want ice cream. I like <laughs> it. Like, looks like sprinkles like on the a ground. Sorbet or something. I know. Like I would love to see this up in an ice cream store. <laughs> um, but it's a it's a great play of, of of colors again. I love the pink and purple and kind of the, you know, the, the, it went a little poppy with it. Um, in the the combination of the natural wild, uh, the waterfall and then yet like these drawn mountains with, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun image. I yeah, would have, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Christy. I'll um, finish. just one thing to elevate it a little bit is that a crooked horizon. I would love that to be a little more mm. level. Um, but great job. Good eye. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if we level that horizon, then that's, that's, yeah, that will kind of, clear up that horizon but i mean in terms of just creativity and what's going on here i mean i think this is great that's that's what these challenges are all about right i mean we have a challenge to kind of give you a template and give you inspiration um but you can really take it into your own hands and there's there's a lot going on here that really just feeds off that creative brain and even the sky's got this like refraction glowy rainbow um blend mode effect to it which i think adds a whole nother element to this so this is great yeah well, we've got some comments asking about where to find the challenges and what what is today's specific challenge. Maybe you can help. Yeah, um, if you go to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop, um, that's the landing page for all of this, where all this magic is happening. And it'll onboard you and let you know everything you need to do. And when you go to the bottom under unlock the challenges, um, there'll be two buttons that say get started or watch video. And with watching the video, it'll show you how to make them. And then you can get the starter files with the get started button. But yes, please join along with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. They're an awesome way to get yourself um, familiar with Photoshop and a great way to get inspired from these amazing hosts that we have running these these streams. So right now it's Voodoo Val doing it and she always gets pretty creative with these and they're a lot of fun. So, so awesome. what was challenged for today, like the specific one? Uh, for today, it was texture. So create an object such, an as, such as a bucket or farm tool then give it a realistic finish using blend modes or textures. Oh, that's cool. And then yesterday's was the let it grow, yeah, right? Yesterday, yeah, yesterday's was the animation. So you're using the Photoshop animation tool to make a plant grow. So, oh hey, my check gosh. it out. This one's got a bug going into it. I this know, I want to do this one. This is so cool. Yeah. I love this. It's just so fun. And it's it's got so many shapes, but yet it's also got this beautiful tonal range with the greens and the purples and then this bright yellow bee flying in and landing it's uh, this is fantastic i don't even know if i have anything negative to say about this one yeah no this one's great i mean it's super original um i like how you have this sort of gradient that sticks to the this color palette for the flowers that are sprouting um and then of course you have it you have a you have a bee friend coming in at the end to really tie all this together the background too, I don't know if this was stock or if you made it, but I think it just fits really well with this with this animation. So this is this well, is great. I one like of it. the other things that I love is um, the fact that the flight pattern of the bee is very similar to the shapes in the plant. Very nicely done, nice touch. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, cool, let's, have, let's look at a few more going up. Okay. So let's look at the challenge above that and see what we got. Cool. I think this is a moving one too. 
Yeah. Oh, so we got a guy going up a ladder. That's awesome. Yeah, this is great. Um, it's a great animation. I think do his feet move. Yeah, his feet move too. <laughs> Check that yeah, out. Yeah, the feet is awesome. Yeah, this is great. Um, the only comment I have is it looks like when it loops the second time or the first time, um, it looks like his image kind of stays at the top before it goes down. So just to kind of clean this up on the Photoshop timeline, I think you can get rid of just that one frame where he's on the top before he goes down. And from there, you'll have a, a seamless loop of him going up and down, up and down. And if you were to put something on some sort of social media website, I think Instagram does this where there's an automatic loop, then essentially just a guy just going up and down on a seamless loop would really, really give that effect and um, an awesome, awesome upload. Even nice job with the different browns and the hair. Like, I, I really like Yeah. Really cool. It's a great attention to color, too. It's not just one um, shade of hair brown right it kind of goes from light to dark i think it gives it definitely some sort of realistic dimension oh we got a Ooh, bird check this one out um so this is from day four let's see the Close. challenge on day four so it's brushes illustrate a character or creature using brushes oh this is beautiful it's like even the light in the eye the little white spots it's 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 done really nice um, but great job with color. Great job. I love the blue and, and the, the textures are, are really fun in this. Yeah, this is great use of brushes. Um, yeah, I love this. All right, let's have a look at maybe two or three more and then we will have about 15 more minutes. Um, well, actually 10 more minutes. No, I can't count like 14 minutes um, until we sign off. So let's look at maybe two or three more. So let's click on this one. Create, don't hate. Create, don't hate. Amen. Love it. I love the message. Yeah. And I love that it's like sprouting a heart out. That's really clever. Yeah. Um, the only bit of feedback that I have, because I, I love this. I think it's 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 really fun. But I find that maybe the font, um, you know, the kind of swirly with the all caps. Um, I would have liked to have seen a font that maybe makes you love a little bit more, maybe a little rounded instead of so hard. But um, yeah, I love this. This is awesome. I love it. Yeah. Um, my feedback is just very nuanced, but I would say just the edges at the bottom of the flower, even at the stem, maybe can be uh, cleaned up a little bit. Uh, you know, maybe they can be feathered so they're not so harsh or kind of like edgy. Um, and then that might make that stem look a little bit, the border have, be a little more cleaner. So, but I mean, I think the message there, the idea is there. I think it looks great. So good job. All right, why don't we look at one more and then we can just hop back onto Lightroom. Oh, this is the same. Let's pass that then. All right, um, let's check this one out. That was great. It, it didn't really quite grow the bud, but that's, yeah, that's great. It looks like it's just in the middle of growing. It's really fun. Yeah. I like the, you know, the, the texture on that pot's really kind of nice. And I like how the, the yellow is reflected in the pot and the type of uh, dragon tiger. I can't really tell. Yeah. It's like the cross between a tri dragon tiger. tiger <laughs> dragon king. Yeah. Um, cool choice of background. Um, yeah. I think it it's a great choice of original background on this piece. Yeah. yeah, I like it. It's It leaves me wanting more. I just want to see the flower blossom. <laughs> okay. Do we have time for one more or are we going to? Uh, yeah, why don't we just, I think that one might be the same. Yeah, let's look at that one and then we can hop back into this Lightroom. One? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's nice. I like the little lines that come out of the yellow, like it's the sun. Um, but yeah, no, the same exact thing you were saying about the, the feathering and the lines at the bottom. Um, mm -hmm. My feedback. This is a fun yeah. challenge. That is fun. Cool. Let's go back to Lightroom then for the remainder of our stream, but... Just want to thank everybody for uh, submitting. Um, just keep doing the challenges and submitting. I love that you all are taking part in this. I'm, I'm loving the submissions and the creativity that are coming behind them. So great job, everybody. Cool. Um, so time check. We have about 10 more minutes left. So let's see what we can knock out in 10 minutes. Okay, no worries. We're going to go to butterflies now, if that's all right with everyone. Um, 
I did the infrared stuff really quickly, but you guys kind of got the idea. Um, infrared is, is very, uh, it's different to edit and it was a new learn learning curve, but I don't want to spend too much time on that because, um, yeah, just, just don't be afraid of really popping the contrast if you do any infrared. Um, so yeah, we're going to go to these beautiful butterflies now. Um, start with the crop. I do have a, a sort of a dad joke from John. He says, to be or not to be. Love it. Oh my God, John, <laughs> you're amazing. <laughs> um, I love it. So I love the color in this, but I do also love these textures. So I am going to play with the different black and whites. I'm going to start with the presets that I've built, um, which, oh, I think that they're so, let's see. And black and white three is color because I messed up. But look at that black and white. Look at how simple that edit is. But yet I it's honestly beautiful. think that that might be how I want this to go. I might pull in just a little more. I zoomed in. I'm pulling just a little bit of detail here. I'm just gonna pop the exposure just a touch, maybe pull. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not clipped, but it's just, it's it's super dark. Hmm. Well, that's how it's gonna be. Actually, that's super easy, right? Like, mm -hmm. I like that edit. I don't have yeah. to do and much. You These put a preset, preset on here, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, sometimes yeah. it's just as easy as that, right? It, you don't necessarily have to go in a photo and force yourself to mess with the sliders. I mean, that's the beauty of presets. If it works on one based on a previous one and there's not much you need to do, then that's all it yeah, takes. I mean, that's, so that's a phenomenal nice, yeah. uh, result from just applying a preset and just little fine changes. Super easy. And that's the one thing about like, you sit down and you, you make presets that work for your files. Um, you know, I used to like give my presets to other people. And then when they saw my presets, they wouldn't necessarily work with their files because some people shoot a little lighter, some people shoot a little darker, some people have their camera set up with more contrast, people are shooting with all different systems. So it's really important to just kind of play with building your own and seeing what works with your own workflow. Um, yeah. So I did three shots of this guy. Um, I'm gonna play around with this new button that I learned from that Adobe Live, the previous button. Let's just see what that does it's cool right it's not yeah. quite there but so we're gonna go back and i'm gonna play with the presets that i built and see if see i like that a little better that one comes, yeah i like this first one that's a little darker um but yeah no now i'm starting to edit super fast and that's the power of presets is is you get to this point where you just it's just minor adjustments um for this image i think there's just too heavy of a vignette um, I'm going to pull that out because I like kind of just the feel of the white. I'm going to play around a little bit with the crop. Um, and you know, it, I do like the color in this, but there's something just so unique about the, just a really contrasty black and white, something kind of fun with that, you know? So yeah. for me, this is, I'm going to pull out just a, I want more, I want more whites for some reason. Yeah, I want it to be like really light with those black eyes. And I probably honestly to finish finish this off, I feel like this is a little too dark for me. So I'm actually going to just highlight all this stuff here with the adjustment brush. I'm going to go in and I'm going to adjust the shadows here. I'm going to pull it, make it just a little bit lighter, which didn't really do too much, but I'll do a little bit. Yeah, I just want to be able to... Your eyes are drawn to these spots of contrast. So while that was like super small, what I just did, I find that it helps lead my eyes down to this guy's eyes. Um, so that was like before the brush strokes. You see how dark, that, or no, sorry. Let me just go to exposure. So that's what that area kind of looked like. And just lightening it up a little bit makes my eyes go down to the butterfly's eyes. Um, but yeah, super easy, super simple. Like this one with the bright orange, I may want to use my super simple color pop that I made a little bit ago. I think that actually looks the really color cool. Pop. Yeah, that's great. So these are all presets that I made here and now. Um, I love the histogram for these two. I was just separating the color channels. It's super cool. Yeah, great color information there. Yeah, for this one, I think it does need, it looks like it's got needs a little bit more of a vignette around the edges. Um, this needs to, so just super simple, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of fun in black and white too, isn't it? 
Yeah. This black uh, so time there. check. We have about five minutes left before we got to start signing off. Wonderful. Well, this has been really fun. I've got a couple more if you guys want me to go through them. Some uh, spider. Yeah, do some like some speed edits. Um, some speed maybe, edits. Like, cool. Yeah, or just or you know it's gonna have to be speed. Just however long you want to take. But you know we have time for maybe one or two depending on how fast we work. Yeah, I'm just gonna use my presets and go really fast. Like for me, my eye is super distracted by this yellow, so I just want to crop it out. Mm -hmm. um, I have. And I'm gonna go through and just do the color pop, which should. Perfect, right? Nice. Looks good. Yeah. Do a little bit here where I'm just gonna highlight, do a little bit of contrast on the face, a little bit of exposure. Um, Using um, contrast brush, nice. Yeah, so just a tiny bit there, bring out that color. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I am a very traditionalist. Like I don't do too much heavy editing work. So I would just kind of keep it like that for what I send off. Everything does go through Lightroom and everything gets its little edits. Um, and you know, there's an endless amount that these programs can do. But for me, I'm all about like trying to get what I can in camera and just doing things that I could do in a dark room. Awesome. Uh, we have a question from Ashi. Mm -hmm. She's asking, um, are you into infrared photography? And I'm gonna assume you, you are since you got one. And if so, what is your favorite quality about it? I just like for me, you know, using new tools is always about enhancing the narrative or enhancing what you want to say. Um, and when I got into the world of insect photography, oh, dude, have I disappeared? Oh, we lost you. Oh my gosh, we can, can you hear me? We can still hear you. We can hear you, but it looks like your camera feed went out. All right, Might give be coming me back. Give me 10 seconds. By 10 yep, no worries. Um, but it's all about trying to find things that help your narrative and try to help you. Um, let's see. There you are. I, <laughs> Welcome back. Hi, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, and for me, the narrative of the bugs was just something that was just in a different world. Like it was all about pattern and texture. And, um, and so for me, like enhancing the narrative of, of seeing how alien I can make the bugs look through infrared photography was why I used that tool. Um, I find that one of the things is, is like when we have a whole bunch of new tools in our bag, we tend to use them way too frequently. And sometimes it doesn't really enhance what you're trying to say or what you're trying to do. Um, but yeah, no, cause I've, I've tried playing around with infrared out in Africa. And a lot of times I come back and I'm like, I don't know why I shot that in infrared. It didn't add to the story at all. Um, so for me, it's all about sitting down, thinking about what your subject is, and then trying to find tools that can help you along the journey of what you're trying to say as an artist. Awesome. So I use infrared very little, but it's a great tool to have in the back pocket for when that one thing comes out where you're just like, I want to take somebody to another world and I want to do that, you know, with, with insects or, you know, cause I, I just think there's something just so alien about just yeah, even. I mean, it's, it's kneecaps. looking through a completely different lens. I mean, this is not how we perceive the world. So giving yeah. us a tool that's able to see things in a totally different perspective. I mean, there's just an endless amount of creativity and art that we can create from it, essentially. For sure. And I'd love to see more insect infrared photography because it's just, it's, it's bizarre. I've been seeing some, like a lot of black light stuff and the black light, like, photography, especially of the rainforest and stuff, some of the stuff coming out is is unreal. And, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm all about, you know, using the tools that can help you be a better photographer. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, cool. So we questions? have about two more minutes left. Um, I'd love for you just to kind of go back to that spider shot. That, that was a oh. great shot. Yeah. A little spider. Yeah, check so that out. I started off with the crop oh. because there's so much detail um, in him. It looks, it almost looks like he has like a yellow cape coming out of him, like a spider hero. I know, yeah. right? It's yeah, such um, a cool composition and shot. That's great. Looking up here, it's like this, this left part is drawing my eye way too much. So I'm just going to work on cropping that out. I'm actually going to tilt it just a little bit more so that I can like really, I don't want to cut the leaf at all. Okay. So mm -hmm. check out this guy. It's a great shot. I love that. Eh, uh, right? The eyes. Ugh. If you're afraid of spiders, look away, but I know snakes I mean, th and this one's a little cute. This one's a little cute one. Like, I will say that. So I'm going to add this one. You know, this image just doesn't work for me in black and white. It needs to be in color. Yeah. Um, and one of the reasons I think the color works is those blue eyes on contrast with, and none of my presets 
really work. Everything is too much. So I'm just gonna do very simple edits. I'm gonna do a simple con, this honestly doesn't need too much. Um, bit of a vignette. It needs to have a little bit of a pop on him. So we're gonna highlight him with the adjustment brush. I'm gonna go over here and use exposure, pull the exposure up, pull that contrast up. I'd love to just add a little bit more blue in his eyes if I can, just to contrast with that. Oh no, sorry, that didn't. Yeah, so I would. That's great. All right, well, it is about that time, so we gotta start saying our goodbyes. Okay. You know, Christy, you did an amazing job. You've showed us a world of photography with insects and bugs and what you can do around it, and it's been so much fun. Thank you for joining us. Thank you guys for having me, and thank you for everyone listening. I'd love to see your work, and yeah, feel free to reach out. I'm pretty friendly-like. <laughs> uh, awesome. Um, real quick, I just want to show the schedule real quick, so stick around because we're not through just yet. Um, we have the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge next with Paul Tranny, and then we'll have Logo Design with Claudi, XD Daily Creative Challenge after that, Draw Along with Kyle, Kyle T. Webster, and then the Design Off with Voodoo Val and Cody Bear. Um, all right, everybody, thank you for joining us. We're going to go ahead and say goodbye, and we will see you tomorrow around this time, but stick around for the rest of the shows we have. All right, everybody, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. <laughs>